it missed Phil Spencer's latest sit down. Did we just come across yet another Xbox flip flop? This time in regards to cloud gaming? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Can y'all do me a huge favor before we get into this one? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because y'all know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so we know the deal, y'all. Um cloud gaming is this this big thing that's that's at the center of this big debate within gaming some people feel you know threatened by it that it'll destroy gaming if it goes through the same way they felt about digital gaming but that's that's a whole nother kit and caboodle that's a whole nother video nonetheless phil spencer of microsoft the head of xbox sat down with game informer <laughs> despite the for sure advice from mm2k i'm telling you man this guy's gonna get tired of this one of these days he's going he's gonna listen to your boy and it's going to be to the benefit of the company right but despite my great <laughs> my great advice he keeps talking he sat down with game informer and he gave the appearance to many that he's now flip-flopping on cloud gaming but a lot in the xbox community are saying in defense of phil no what Phil said about cloud gaming, he's always said, because they all have short-term memory. But I am here, father time I am, <laughs> the father of time that I be, I'm here to remind everybody to remove the fog from your memory and to remind you what has been said over time in regards to cloud gaming, especially from Phil Spencer, okay? So let's go over the whole background here. So you know how I like to do things here. I like to do the checkup. I like to do the analysis and then I break it down with the prescription. So first to check out. Okay, so as we know, cloud gaming, though a technology with for sure certain dominance, decades in the making, in the eyes of many, there has been a lot of ire, like I said earlier, to the hardcore gaming community in regards to this technology. Now on the heels of this, Phil Spencer and many of the Xbox brass again talked in detail with Game Informer about their current plans of implementing the tech in the future. They now talk as if the service only deemed suitable as an add-on to your dedicated experience. But have they always spoken this conservatively about cloud gaming? Again, to the Xbox apologists, yes, yes, it's always been like this, but we're going to show you the light. On to the analysis. Okay, so it appears not, all right? So let's follow the timeline. But before we go through the timeline all the way towards the beginning, I first wanna show you guys, let me see here. I pull this up properly. Uh, I think that's cool, all right. So this right here is the Game Informer uh, interview where it's called Forward Facing. And in it, if I can jump to the part where Phil Spencer talks his stuff now he says despite the optimism surrounding the technology and that is cloud gaming spencer acknowledges that it's still years of community feedback from mature uh, maturation and that is still far short of the experience players get when their game is local now he's he's speaking purely of in regards to xbox all right we'll get into that later but quote this is what phil spencer says quote the best place to play is locally. I'll say that flat out, he says. Streaming is a technology of convenience. It's a technology of choice when you're away from your console and you want to play, period. That's how he's outlining it right now. But again, have they always talked this way? Well, back in 2017, November 2017 to be exact, they felt that connecting to gamers via cloud gaming, gaming, no matter where they felt was best to play, not where Phil Spencer felt it was best to play, but where they felt was best to play was key. Remember this? All right. This is an interview that they've done with my, my homeboy, Tom Warren of The Verge. And in that interview, uh, Phil Spencer describes cloud gaming as now players are playing the games across every device and we're connecting those players across all those devices, explained Spencer. 
who was recently promoted to report directly to Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella. Obvious for, obviously for us, the console is important part there, but connecting gamers wherever they are is the vision of Microsoft around what we're doing in gaming. If that focus on the consumer rather than the hardware sounds familiar, it's because it's central to Satya Nadella's vision for Microsoft. <laughs> I mean, come on, y'all. All right, but that, oh, well, there's probably many out there say, but that don't mean nothing. Or my glasses was foggy in M2K, or, or my hearing aid wasn't on when you said that. You got more? All right, well, I will say this. To follow that up in March of 2013, I mean, 2018, excuse me, about four months later, they had this to say, you know, where they were more specific about who they wanted to reach. All right, so this is again, another interview with my own boy, Tom Ward from The Verge. And then they say this, we believe there is going to be 2 billion gamers in the world. And our goal is to reach every one of them. Okay, does that sound like some complimentary service just for people with consoles? No. Well, MM2K, I'm still looking for the batteries for my hearing aid. Or, you know what? That, that don't mean nothing, MM2K. We've been shown the damage control. You're going to have to try harder. Okay. Several months after that, in October 2018, they talk up console retention like they had from the beginning. They've always said that console means something to us, even though we know the, we had the snafu where Phil Spencer said, well, I ain't got to sell you a console, right? But you know, that's okay. They still talk up the console while maintaining they want a 1v1 experience on the cloud opposed to the dedicated console experience. Now that sounds more than something quote unquote complimentary, right? What am I talking about? Let's go to this feature article that they had with The Wire in October, 2018. Look at this big feature article. I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling for decades and decades. Look at this. With Project X Cloud, Xbox wants to bring gaming anywhere you are. All right. But I don't mean nothing in that title. Well, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait till I roll this beautiful bean footage, okay? So, secondly, this is they're talking to, to, to Chaldry about what they're trying to do. Chaldry was made the head of xCloud Game Services shortly after um, uh, Phil Spencer became head. And he said he wants to make sure that cloud gaming isn't a halfway deal. Okay, they don't want Project X Cloud to feel like some separate silo through which you can access an Xbox game. He wants it to be indistinguishable from any other game that you're playing. Meaning they want it to be a 1v1 match because they don't care what call, where, where you play. This is not a complimentary service. This is a service to where if you want to just game here all the time, you can, or if you're, you're gaming on your console, you can. You can never own a console and you should be just as happy if you like playing on the go with Project X Cloud, because X Project X Cloud just is not some complimentary service. Okay, that's how they spoke as recently as November of 2018. But something happened. Something happened. Okay, and as I mentioned at the beginning, Phil now says this regarding Project X Cloud. <laughs> he says the best way to play is locally i'll say it flat out streaming is technology of convenience it's the technology of choice when you're away from the console and you want to play <laughs> i mean, like come on man you can't hey look man okay so here's the deal here's the deal all right so a lot of people like to believe that I just like to, to, to beat up on Phil, just, just for craps and giggles. And that's not the case. That's not the case. I'm gonna get into what this all means right now, because we're gonna roll on to the prescription. I'm gonna bring this all home. Now, first and foremost, one thing, that before I bring it on home with the flip-flop in here, one thing that has been consistent though, because I'm fair, I'm fair. You know what I'm saying? One thing that has been consistent is the indication that this will be a work in progress for Xbox. And a lot of my Xbox brethren miss that. 
How did they miss? How, how did they do so? Well, let me show you how they did so. Okay. So this is an article from The Verge, from Tom Warren again, and it says Microsoft xCloud service streams Xbox games to PCs, consoles, and mobile devices. Now again, Choudhury, that was made head of the Project xCloud division, he admits, he says, scaling and building out Project xCloud is a multi-year journey for us. And he said that October 8, 2018. So this thing is not going to be ready for rollout you know what i'm saying in any serious way whether it's complimentary or not for several years and phil from many accounts from in, uh, publications like um ign had announced that at xo19 that it's going to be two three years max from the time of this recording you know what i'm saying from the time of xo19 before X Cloud is in full retail rollout. You know what I'm saying? So you get a lot of free rinky dink things to try to tinker around with and play with. And then you have a lot of people in the back that up, you have a lot of people that were like, woohoo! The Xbox X Cloud service is, is bar none the best thing ever. Woohoo! The performance is great. Now they're 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 backtracking and they're like, well, Xbox is fully aware of the latency issues and everything like that, but they have a master plan. Trust them. Trust them. Trust them. Trust them. Look, here's the deal. They have been consistent there. Like I said, I will be fair. And people just missed it because people hear what they want to hear. But I will say this in addition, right? What we do know now with all this evidence in front of us, we just know that they may just realize that the work per that special sauce method that now people are saying, this is going, they're, they're, they're aiming for something bigger. That that special bigger, <laughs> that special method will take longer than they expected. It may not ever pan out though, if we use Xbox's history as an indicator. They've said things like where they promised VR. Oh, believe you me, VR is gonna be part of uh, uh, um, the Scorpio, uh, Scorpio or Project Scarlet or whatever, you know what I'm saying? To come to say that nobody wants it. <laughs> so until it comes to fruition, we don't know where this is gonna land, all right? If we, uses, if we use Xbox previous history as an indicator, okay? Therefore, comparing xCloud to any of the capabilities of GeForce Now, even Shadow, even my personal favorite cloud service right now, Stadia, is a farce. Due to Microsoft and Xbox's apparent lack of confidence now shown and the end result and i've just laid it all out there for you so if you think that's okay don't don't uh, cloud ain't going nowhere then continue to be a fool because no matter how much of the old fogey naysayer sentiment is out there that same sentiment will not detract younger gamers to the technology my son is a hardcore pc guy i knew cloud gaming would be for him he was following the fray. He was following the outrage culture. He's a impressionable young teen. He said, Dad, that stadium is trash. So I finally bought him his favorite game, Borderlands, on it. Now he has it for Xbox and he has it for uh, Stadia. And he's playing it. And I had to make him go to sleep because the performance is so much greater on Stadia. And he has an X. We have an X here that he, he has access to. Okay. So, and the fact that he could go boop, 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 and then play it on his phone, like, you, you can't beat that with a stick to the younger crowd and to a lot of people, but mainly the younger crowd. So just keep believing that it's okay for Microsoft to be towards the end or in the middle of this. Uh-uh. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to be in something, be in it all the way. All right? That, that's my argument always don't be in it halfway don't just be there be in it all the way you're the richest company in the world you got to excel at something all right perception is nine tenths to the law if you got all this money you can't be number one in at least one of the divisions that you're in then that's a problem to the to the average consumer all right and that is a perfect segue into my final point look y'all y'all gotta stop getting mad at me for being skeptical of phil here's phil's problem in a nutshell Okay, and it's not that I, I don't know the guy personally. I know people that do. It ain't nothing against him personally, but some of my best friends in the world that I would die for, I would never have them do my taxes. You understand what I'm saying? 
It's, it's, uh, it's about confidence at the end of the day. It's not whether you like someone's uh, uh, derriere or you, it, none of that matters. If you got a crush on Phil, you got a crush on Phil. It don't matter. Is, is his vision and how he implement things competent enough to get the job done? And right now, to me as a consumer, no. Why? Because he brings up things too enthusiastically that are in flight. That's an industry term that says, hey, I have an idea. We kind of shook it out a little bit, kicked the tires, and now we want to put it in development and see where it goes. All right? And you never too enthusiastically talk about things in flight unless you have to. And then if you have to, you better make it happen because that speaks to your competency if you can, all right? And because of that, Phil to me is the equivalent of Peter, Peter Molyneux, you know what I'm saying? Of, uh, I believe it was Lionhead Studios, the people that made, the, the, the creator of Fable, all right? You know how Peter Molyneux used to go and promise you all these grand things and Fable was gonna be able to do this to, to, to butter your toast and put it in, in, you know what I'm saying, and do all this stuff for you? And it never came to fruition? That's Phil. That is Phil. I mean, at the end of the day, the thing that may shake out might be like, oh, okay, that's cool. But it's nowhere near what, what you were promised with this guy. And that's the problem. And there has to come some time that even you diehards that are listening to this, that are hitting the, down, the thumbs down button, that are mad at me, calling me a flip flopper, calling me uh, untrue, undedicated, not a hardcore, not a real gamer, and all that other silly stuff that y'all talking about. There has to even come a time for even y'all to put Phil's feet to the fire and follow through and for him to follow through with promises instead of just selling dreams. Because until then, y'all can keep talking bibberwats and potentials from new from new bot studios as Z say new LLCs, while the rest of us, fans of other platforms, are living it up off of fulfilled promises that are in our hands now. And that's it from your boy, MM2K. And hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always tell you, here's what I think. But if you did like the material, you can catch me on the corner of every boulevard, baby. Check out the links below to follow me. Yo, those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, the PNTS Network, to the Hard Knock Digital Culture, and to the Stadia Dosage. I, I participate in all those. Check me out, all right? And with that being said, hey, look, man, enjoy the holidays. Enjoy the, the as we get closer to the new year, 2020. And you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.